Hello and welcome to Impact Africa, our online program where we get to have conversations with diverse people and organizations who are impacting lives positively. Yes, we use the platform as well to celebrate positive news, events and more. I am Dr. Kemi Akiode Adibayo, known as Dr. Ramake, and in today's program to share a story and their story is a lovely, oh she's funny, um, <laughs> witty and everything else, smart I can see, young lady called Candice McDowell. She is the co-partner of Foodies Cape Town and yeah we are at the urban food fair in constantia plumstead i never know which one so candice welcome, welcome to impact thank you africa very much i appreciate it you're most welcome tell us a little bit about yourself because i know you're not from cape town originally no i'm not so tell us <laughs> so i was born in durban uh -huh. originally and i grew up there and then from young age my parents were in the clothing industry we moved to mauritius for six years to lived on mauritius oh mauritius yeah. so oh, that's island beautiful. girls oh, beautiful uh -huh. yeah, it's back, back in the day yeah. right and then from mauritius we moved to fiji islands and we lived there for two years as well and then back to cape town yeah and so it was so, a great life <laughs> obviously a very good life and you yes. had parents you know who were entrepreneurs yes, um, from the beginning so. yes so tell us first about yourself as a South African. Let's go back to you my know, roots. From, yeah, your roots as yes. a South African. What are yes. you mostly proud of? Oh, I'm proud about everything. You know, living in Mauritius, everyone hearing that I'm from South Africa was like this. So many questions. First uh -huh. of all, you know how everyone overseas is asking about South Africa. I don't know. I love the people. I love the language. I love the food. I love the. We've just. We live in a beautiful place. You know, I find that um, Cape Town is where we are now. It's just got. It's got good roots, and I'm happy to raise my children here. A lot of good values for everybody to mm. learn here as well. So, yeah. how was it for you growing up? Bouncing around, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I know, because that's a big move from Mauritius yes, to Fiji. Yes, yes, and, yes. And what position are you in your family? Are um, you, are one you of two, yes. i got one a younger sister, yes, okay. who's now living in Edinburgh. Okay. Yes, yeah, so she's over there. But for me, you know, moving around, I guess that's why it got me into the industry I'm in today, mm. is because we would always be at different hotels. My parents, um, my dad was in clothing, but they would also do scuba diving courses at hotels. So I got to learn different dynamics and help in the kitchen and help in the laundry. and. Just find out about the grassroots things. Yes, that you yes, need to and to I do. think that's very important. Everyone needs to start from the basis mm -hmm. to be able to work themselves up to be able to get the respect and to respect others in the same way. So, what was your first job, really? My what would you say your first job? job was? <laughs> <laughs> I was the pastry chef at my yoga restaurant oh, okay. in, in Newlands Hotel. Right. Yes, so I did okay. my three-year chef degree at um, International Hotel. Also, oh, you're a chef. I am a part chef. Part okay. pastry chef. Yes. Wow, I didn't know that. You yes. see, I'm finding out. Okay. <laughs> yes. So mm -hmm. uh, I started up my yoga as a trainee chef and working okay. in the pastry section and all over and yeah just moved my way up and all around in different restaurants and learning from the basis and I think that's one of the things is learning starting in scullery and working yourself up I think it installs good values in me and respect for everybody so now let's go back to you being a co-partner you know yes. with um, foodies, foodies uh, Cape, Town. Cape Town what's that about and how why did you decide to go into you know being an entrepreneur i guess you, be, you having parents already that were doing that like yes. you said when you were growing up selling clothing so what yeah. made you decide um you know for me I, obviously i've run my own restaurant for 14 years that i wow. then stopped in january okay uh, covid really hit me so i decided to try something new i met up with my business partner michael and i love this i like working with people i like pushing myself and pushing my boundaries and seeing what i can do and taking it from there let's go back to that restaurant because i used to have yes. a restaurant oh, myself as okay. well in scotland oh nice so what was the cuisine? What were you doing? Was it pastry? Was it so? I I basically did everything myself. Oh, okay. Running. I had fourteen <laughs> staff members in the beginning. Okay. And I had girls cooking for me, girls serving for me. I, I jumped in everywhere. If I washed dishes or if I made the coffee or served uh -huh. the customers, uh -huh. that's what I did. So it was in Mowbray in an office park in River Park. Okay. I ran that. Yeah. Right. And it, well, I loved it. I was the only coffee shop. I was there. I was there for everybody. So what were some there. of the challenges? Because I'm sure there would have been challenges. Lots of challenges. Uh -huh. um, you know, when I left my job at Aubergine, I worked at Aubergine in, in Gardens restaurant there. Um, my chef said to me, Candice, you know, you're an amazing entrepreneur. You're going to do so well in life, but you're going to have one struggle. And I looked at him and I thought, no. no. People, people working for me. Because mm. I'm a very soft-hearted person. 
And it was the huge struggle for me, mm. learning mm. about people, learning mm. to talk to people the right way, learning to ask people to do something in the right way. And going from a very hectic life in a chef world from when I worked in France, like intense lifestyle. Mm to moms that are just earning a living for their children and how mm, you have to deal with mm, them mm. was my biggest struggle. But I made, I got there, I got there. <laughs> you should be very proud of yourself. Yeah. So you've had the international experience I of have. working in France. You yeah. know, so when, before we started the program, you were tell, you know, obviously from the name McDowell, yes. you know, it's not from South Africa no. originally. <laughs> so tell yeah. us the history of that. So that's that. actually from Ireland. Okay. So my dad and my grandfather was born in Ireland and um, yeah, that's how McDowell came about and dad moved back to South Africa, joined the police force when he was younger and that's just how it came and about. Have you been I've there never before? been to Ireland. You need to I go. You can go to France and not go back to I where know. ancestors are. Where you my know, actual really. roots come yeah, from. Yeah, your roots from. And I really want to because yeah. I mean, look at it. It's just beautiful and and yeah. So I'm I'm getting there. The paperwork for my son are in the in the process. <laughs> so now let's talk about here now with yes. the urban food fair yes. you know that you've, you're doing here with michael your cook partner your business partner yes. how's that been and you know what what should we look at when we come to this thing so this was also very different for me another step up and trying different things so i think for me working with someone i've always worked well, for a long time i've only been working on my own with myself so having a having a business partner has just been i'm learning so much mm. from him and with regards to the urban food fair we took came took this over in april the the people the food you've got all these young entrepreneurs coming out with their passion and creating these meals for you and these delicious foods my weakness because you never know what you want to <laughs> eat <laughs> but um i think it's just a great it's, it's a great environment for people to come and see listen to music you know have something to drink chat with some of the young entrepreneurs see what they're creating and sometimes they create different things that's not even on the mm. menu because you feel like something and that's why i love every individual here and how many stalls you know roughly do oh, you, you know it, it, changes, it changes but between 25 and 30 okay yeah and it's and a then, good range because i see it's so diverse yes you've got the yes. the indian food you've got fish and chips yeah. you've got coffee you've got um, yes. you know so it's so diverse yes. and I, I think the last time i saw uh, somebody who made sauce yes so yes. you do have so we, we have things. guys that step in and step out and try okay. different things okay. and then i try not to duplicate so i like everyone mm. to have their niche and right. to have not have six guys doing sushi have one mm. guy doing sushi and and his sushi is amazing though <laughs> and, I, and i think my my last time that came here which was my first time and i was so pleased i heard you know because i listen a lot to people like not well, you've, drop, you've but, to, <laughs> yeah. yeah so and i heard you know one um a, a couple you know yes. they came to my fish and chips and they were telling the lady there that you know it's really nice you know today i could see that they were repeat customers yes. they come in probably every week yes and that's good to see local people supporting yes. local businesses yes. so we do we've got um locals that come every wednesday and every saturday without fail they come you know so they don't have to cook on a wednesday night they come mm. in and it's so nice when they come and support and, and have the a prices relationship. are very affordable i believe i think mm. they are mm. you know i find that um there's something for everybody yeah. if you want to pay a certain amount for something you can but most of the traders stick to a certain amount that's affordable for everybody right. so which days of the week do we open? so the urban food fair runs every wednesday okay. from four till nine so okay. it's like i call it our open air night market yeah. it's in a botanical garden it's uh -huh. beautiful uh -huh. i mean we've got the heaters to keep us warm if need be <laughs> and then every saturday i'm, I'm here now i know i haven't even got <laughs> we have a beautiful night it's, today it's lovely yeah, yeah. and then and every saturday from nine till three right yes okay. and then we have more of the artisanal stuff you have your bakers and your cheese guys that don't usually and come there's live the band sometimes live music okay, every like Wednesday music? and every Saturday okay. yes yeah and, and we it's change free. that so and it's, it's not free. that you pay to come in yes okay. exactly so they can come and it's free entrance and that's I think very important for us with most of our events is we want everyone to have the opportunity to be able to experience the markets right. and the and the evening awesome. so we don't like to charge yeah all right you know what we'll be right back Wow, Candy, so a born in Dover. I didn't even ask you why Cape Town. Why did you decide to come to, come to Cape Town? I just I, remember I, that I, bit. Now. <laughs> I think when we moved back from Fiji, I came with my parents. I was okay. still in school. Ah, so, so we you came had no to Cape choice Town. In no, no, no okay. not really. Right. But I've had the choice to leave and I've left and I've still come back right. to Cape Town. Right. So and obviously that journey ran a restaurant for 14 years due to COVID that affected the business. Yes. Um, and now you're doing, you know, the food is Cape Town yes. through you're doing the 
oven food fair and a lot of other things. What yes. other things do you do? Oh actually? golly, we run food festivals. Okay. We're busy planning our chili mm -hmm. festival in November, which is also going to be here. Right. And yeah, we've got so much on the cards. We do local community markets. We do bigger events and we just like dabble in everything and, uh, you know, try something different. Right. Yeah. Let me now go now to you as a yes. person, to yes. Candice. Yes. <laughs> We've spoken about that bit, you know, the business side of what you yes. do. What are the three things for you that you value most in life and why? And I can say it because I have a tattoo of it on my arm. Oh, okay. Actually. Right. <laughs> so family, love and happiness. I find that they're ah. three very important things in my life. You know, a lot of people can say finance and a lot of people can say um, success or anything. But mm. for me, family is number one, really, really important for me because I find that it's your, it's your, your base mat for your life. And if that's not that not mm. sappy, then mm. I find you can't mm. really grow up. Mm. You know, love finding someone. I've been with my husband mm. for twelve years now. Mm. Finding your mm -hmm. love mm -hmm. and yeah, happiness wow. in, in every aspect of my life. Yeah, I Everybody think they're three very right. important things in, to, to me. So yeah. as a foodie, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask you this one. Yes, I'm a chef and yes. somebody who's at a restaurant. What's yes. your favorite food? Lasagna. And why? Lasagna. I can't okay. explain it. Like, right. That is my <laughs> ultimate. I mean, my weakness at, is uh -huh. cheese. Like for me, that is just my weakness. But lasagna is one of my favorite, all-time favorite meals. Always has been. And can, I can choose fancy if I want. I don't want, I just want a good lasagna. <laughs> you know, with the pool. <laughs> that is my utmost favorite thing. Oh, <laughs> so it's now, hearty and homey. <laughs> Wow, that that's interesting. But you know, I was hoping you'd come to something African, but uh, still, you're oh, allowed to go. You're uh, allowed to go that in, way. In saying that, in saying that, okay. last week I actually uh -huh. went out to a restaurant and um, there was pup on the menu. You have no idea how long I had haven't had pup. Oh okay. And I had it, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> and that's the truth. I was just like, oh. No, you're allowed because yeah. even me too. I have foreign taste sometimes. Yes. So, you know. It's I about what you love. Taste, yeah, exactly. we all love our own taste. Yeah. So now let me go on to what are your likes and dislikes? What does Candice like and dislike? I think it's changed so much in my life. <laughs> <laughs> to be very honest. <laughs> okay. uh, Tell us. I don't know. So likes in, in, mm. in the form of kindness? Or do you mean in the form, or do, or do you mean in more of a culinary industry? Or just in general? Anything in general. Yeah. So, I mean, I love kind people. I love people mm. in general. I love mm. talking. I mm. can talk behind leg of a donkey. Yeah. <laughs> and people have to stop me when we have fries. I just, I really enjoy people, mm. if I have mm. to say. If that's mm. like one of my biggest things that I do enjoy in life. And your dislikes, what you don't like? If your son now is going to say, you know, Candice, uh uh, she doesn't like that. She's no? that kind of person. So, <laughs> when he leaves, doesn't, doesn't follow his chores. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. When my husband irritates me, <laughs> no. We let him here. He's not listening. <laughs> no, I love him. I don't. No, I, I think it also goes back to people. I just like oh, no. people who are two-faced, who are rude, mm. who you know go mm. behind people and stuff like yeah. that to make other people's lives yeah. unnecessary miserable. I just can't deal with that. Yeah. So for you, what is success? Would you say right now, you know, you are successful? What is your own definition of success? Um, when does, where is there ever a line, I would I say, know, you know, I know, because right? it's, it's a constant step up mm. and I find that for me, success comes from inside, it comes from your limits, it comes from your boundaries and where you're prepared to push yourself to or where you're prepared to work yourself to. With me, it doesn't ever end. I would mm. say that I am happy mm. now, mm -hmm. I am happier now than I was mm. last year, yes, but success, it doesn't have its limits. So I would say we're very happy where we are and we're very blessed and grateful where mm. I am right now. Mm. Yes. So now let's go on to leadership because yes. obviously with the market and running a restaurant yes. and I know you said earlier on people, you know, mm. you being soft and all that. Um, what are some of the qualities you need to have as a leader and what does leadership mean to you? I would say listening is a very very important part of it you know i've 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 learned the hard way and um i think that it again goes back to people but with regards to leadership you need to have you need to be able to listen you need to be able to compromise you need to be able to work together with everybody and communication is a very hmm. important role in my business that i have with traders with myself with my business partner and i find if there is no communication then there is no going forward the communication aspect of a business is very very important hmm. Hmm. yeah you, you know when I was writing down there, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, 
That's the same qualities you need in a marriage. Yes. <laughs> you need to listen, that. you need to communicate. You okay, need so to compromise. Yes. Yeah. So, it is. Yeah. It's very so, much. And I mean, business uh, and a marriage is uh, the same thing. Uh, if you don't uh, work on it, uh, it's not going to work. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So now let's go back to young Candice. Yes. Because obviously you're still young, I believe. You. <laughs> yes. I still consider myself young. I think it's all um, in your head. It's all in your yeah. head. <laughs> what advice or what would you share with a younger Candice, you know, at maybe age 10, some of them, what you've learned that maybe, I know you said earlier, and you've learned the hard way. So what are some of the life lessons that you could quickly share with us that you will give that you wish maybe you had known or that has helped you? So the one important lesson that my dad has taught me in life, why am I getting a tear to my eye? Do not be a bull in the china shop. Take two steps back. Think about hmm. something before just bashing into it or open. A very poisonous thing is your mouth. So hmm. I have learned that you take two steps back, you think about it, you take in what you need to do and then you move forward. So don't just rush into things. Don't just jump in, you know, think about it and prioritize what is actually important mm. and what you need to get done and that's always been my life lesson from my dad which I haven't always listened to but he's exactly the same <laughs> as me two steps that's back, so cool. think <laughs> about <laughs> it and then move forward mm. you know yeah. and really just yeah. pursue your passion mm. don't just go mm. because you need to go and do something pursue what you want and mm. I find you find happiness doing something that mm. you really have passion in and you do well Wow, that's deep. You could run a master class on that. <laughs> and you know what? We'll be right back to share more. Wow. What, you know, for you, you value love, family, happiness, and obviously your favorite food there. I love that. I need to go and try. I've never tried. No, I know. I know. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to redeem myself to say there's some food I've never really tried. So I need to go and try lasagna. I definitely oh, need to. It's my ultimate. Yeah. <laughs> so now I want to ask you about social issues. You know, obviously um, we live in South Africa and a lot of social issues, crime, unemployment, teenage pregnancy, um, HIV, you know, and a lot of other stuff, which to be honest, it's across Africa and across the world in different variation. Yes. So for you, what, what, you know, what is one social issue? It might not be one of what I've mentioned. Um, that for you, you would like something to be done about. And what do you think are the solutions to whatever that issue is? You know. Again, goes back to me being soft, but I find that like homeless people, children on the streets is a very hard sore um, subject for me. You know, you see these people. I mean, I try help where you can, but it, it, yeah. it, it, sometimes there's only so much you can do. And yep. I feel like, and I might be talking out of turn here, but like we really need to do something as a community, as a nation, to help these people. They they have no one. Yeah. You know, you look at us and we have a hiccup. We have someone to fall back on. These people have no one. I speak to some of these guys on the side of the road, we meet my side of the valley, and they, they qualify, mm, mm, but they can't get a job, mm, mm, so they're standing mm. on the road. But so how, how do we address that? What do you think? I know you said we need to come together as a community, but what more? Because I know there are already organizations and certain communities doing that, um, U-Torn, MESS, um, yes. BRC, we have a lot of people yes. that we work with. So what more needs to be done in terms of me and you that could help? I, I think it's a very a very difficult question to mm. ask because, you know, we, we do do as much as we mm -hmm. can in mm. our own selves <laughs> by taking food to these guys yes. and helping yes. them. You know, my mom, when we grew up, I always wondered why she always had a bag of apples in her car. And that would be when she came across a kit, she would hand something to them. You know, I make those dried soup, soup, soup jars up. You hand them out. It's, it doesn't take a lot to just give mm. a little bit out mm. there. Mm. But I also think that um, the higher powers need to mm. need to step in and do something. Right. I did see that our councillor was showing um, housing actually on TikTok the other day. TikTok the other day, which they're building, which I think would be amazing. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be fancy. Mm -hmm. It needs to be somewhere safe, mm -hmm. somewhere warm, and somewhere they can get clean. Yeah, okay. it's 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 a, it's a real hard sore for me to so see it. Obviously 
it needs to be a partnership working with the people, us community and our local yes. councillors yes. and of course the government and other people. Government, well. yes. I so didn't want to mention to names, done. but yes, it, yes. It, it does need to be done. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that, and I do know there are lots of societies out there, lots of groups that are doing their best. Yes. I yes. mean, I have yes. certain trainers oh, yeah. that are spending yeah. their every mm -hmm. hour helping mm -hmm. people where they can. Mm -hmm. And I just feel overwhelmed sometimes because I feel I'm on my own. Like, I just like, yeah. You know, I look at, at my close circle and we all are trying our hardest, but it just gets, it doesn't look like it's enough. Yeah, and it seems since COVID, it's even worse. It's, um, and, it's, and it's not just hmm. a, a certain class of people, it's yeah. everybody. Everyone. No, it's everyone. It, now it cuts out. Yeah, it cuts across now everyone. And it's yeah. very sad, mm. yeah. Mm. It is very sad. Okay, I know I didn't really want to finish on that note, but uh, <laughs> because we started on a very high note. Yeah. And yeah, uh, what I'm going to ask you, um, but before I do that, we celebrate you, we appreciate you. Well done for what you're doing in the community. You know, using food as a platform, you know, to impact life because you might not know, you know, some people might not have anywhere to go and this could be an outing, you know, yes. for them or even talking to other people. Yes. And the opportunity you're giving to the entrepreneurs themselves by providing, you know, the stall and the opportunity it's Thank amazing. Thank you. I know, yes, yeah, some days will be quiet, some days will be busy, yeah. but well That's done life. for sticking on to it. <laughs> Thank and you, we, I really we, appreciate it. We celebrate it. you Thank and you. we hope, you know, to see more and to hear more of the stories, Absolutely. especially of the all the entrepreneurs, yes, you know, in India. they've got lovely stories. And we want to come and hear the stories as well of the kids' period. Yes, you know, yes. Because I know you said once a month, Yes, you the last that? Saturday of the okay, month. Okay, tell we have us a, about that. Actually. So we have we so we have this tent for the Urban mm -hmm. Food Fair. We put up a separate tent on the other field, and it's young entrepreneurs. So kids up until the age of 14, 16 can come in. They can take a spot. They can sell something to make pocket money, just to teach them to do something, some different values to see maybe they're interested in doing something like this and becoming a young entrepreneur and taking a different path in life. And the kids are so excited and happy. There's so much for everything for people to do. Go bedazzle, bedazzle an Alice band or something like that. And, and, and the charge you're giving them for the stall, and I'm glad you're charging something so yes. that they know as well. Yes. It's very I find it very important reasonable. that they pay. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. I find mm -hmm. it very important, mm -hmm. you know. Because it's how much? 50 rand. 50 rand. You know, so why it's good they pay because yes. then that way they know, you know. Exactly. That, yeah. And mm -hmm. a lot of them look at me and I try and explain to them, it's just for you to learn mm -hmm. that life isn't mm -hmm. free. <laughs> so you need to pay and now you go make your money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what kind of um, business, you know, industry is coming up from that? Because oh. I know you were talking about the young girl who's going to make lemons. Yes, she's six making years her own old. lemonade uh -huh. from lemon in the tree. I mean, <laughs> lemonade, I, when sorry. she messaged yes. me, I was like, yes, uh -huh. why not? We've got kids making bracelets and okay. Alice bands and, and party packs. Mm. And it's it's just amazing what they're coming up with, you know. And one little girl has got her own clothing brand already. And it's something different. Clothing brand? Yes. Wow. And she's, I think she's like 14 or 15. She's trying wow. it, you know. Wow. And she's got such an amazing spirit behind her. Right. Yeah. Well, we can wait. We'll want to definitely come and visit thank and you. hear their stories. Are Absolutely. we allowed to come and do that? Absolutely. Right. You can thank chat you to them so first. Much. Yes. Yes. Thank yeah. you so, so much. Anytime. And uh, in closing, what I want you to do is just give words of encouragement to young people, especially, but women or entrepreneurs or anyone you want to speak to. But I need you to look in their direction. I mainly would just like to say that do what you can do don't be hard on yourself you know if you have a feeling that you want to try something really try it and stick to your passion follow your follow what you want to do and just be happy with it and enjoy it and enjoy life because it goes by so quickly so be strong and I hope wish you all the best of luck in anything and everything you guys are wanting to do I love that. <laughs> Stick to your passion, be yes. strong, enjoy be life, happy. enjoy be it. happy. And I can see that that happiness, that joy, it's radiates oh, I love all, I you do. know, from, from <laughs> within you, yes. you know, there. So thank you, thank you. Candice. We Appreciate really celebrate it. you and wish you all the very best thank for the future. Very much. Thank you. Okay, that's all we've got time for. It's been an awesome chat hearing the story of this young, amazing, free and happy <laughs> and joyful lady and her journey and we will definitely be hearing more stories about what they do more you know with the festival the chili festival the young premier uh, festival uh, um, event and so on so can't wait to be back and yeah keep supporting them we're going to be sharing their social media handles at the end of the program 
So next time, stay safe, stay blessed, love you all. Thank you.